Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join me today. And thanks to Chinook Community Futures for putting this series on. I know I'm really excited to share my expertise with you all. And I do think it'll be beneficial for lots of businesses if you apply it to your website. Um, and we do only have about 20 minutes, so I'm just gonna get into it. Uh, if you do have questions, there is a chat um, specifically for questions and answers, I believe. So if you drop them in there, I'll see them afterwards and then we can I'll go through that once the presentation is done. So today I'm going to be going over how to write copy for your website. So first of all, why is website copy important? But before we do that, I'm just going to go over what copy means because I know it's a term that I use quite a lot and it's used in marketing quite often, but not necessarily in other industries. So when I say copy, all I mean is text. So website copy is just the text that's on your website. Ad copy is just the text that's on your ad, etc. So when you're talking about why website copy is important, um, it often gets overlooked. People tend to put a lot of the focus on design when it comes to websites, which is also important, but they need to go hand in hand because if you have great design, but the copy isn't as good, then the reader will just get lost and the message won't get portrayed as it's supposed to be. Um, and then there's a few important things and functions that your copy needs to do as well. So for example, it needs to tell the reader what your company does, first of all. It also needs to make them curious enough to keep reading, which is an important one. And it needs to clearly explain why they should make the purchase. Then once they know that, it needs to be very obvious how they should make the purchase. And these things may seem obvious, but we do find that they're the most common areas that get confused. So that's what this is gonna be focused on today. And I do have some general copywriting tips to keep in mind as I go through these slides. I'm gonna be showing you a layout in the next slide, but just keep these general um, ideas in mind as we're going through them. So for example, um, we like to frame, you know, sentences in a positive way as opposed to a negative way. And I mention that because it can be tempting to say about, you know, talk about the things that you want to avoid for your customers or your clients, right? Like when you're talking internally, often you'll say, oh, we're better than the competitor because we do this better kind of thing. Um, so it's important to phrase that in a positive way instead of you don't need to call out your competitors and say they're doing a bad job. You can just talk about how you do a good job and stay positive, right? Um, it's a good idea to incorporate keywords and I won't get into keyword research <clears throat> right now just because we don't have time, but that's something to look into at another time. Um, just because the way that you talk internally is different than the way that customers talk about your business. So when you do this keyword research, you're finding out how the general public talks about your company and that's going to help you get found on Google, which is important. And then also, you know, general tip to check your grammar. Of course, I have to include that. Um, you can use a tool like Grammarly, of course, or just ask somebody to read it over and, you know, let you know if anything stands out or needs to be revised. Um, but also check readability. This is a cool one because we like to write for a grade eight reading level, which sounds pretty low, um, but that's just because we wanna make it as easy as possible for the reader to understand what the company does, right? Um, if I know that a lot of companies have audiences that speak very technically, but just because they can, doesn't mean they want to, right? If you're talking more simply, it's just less brain energy for people to understand. They're more likely to stay on the page longer and you're more likely to get the purchase. So after you've done all of this writing, you can actually take your document of text and put it into the Hemingway app or Readable. They're actually both websites. Um, I have some links that we can share. Hopefully they get into the chat there, but you can paste that in and it'll tell you what grade reading level that you have written for. So again, we aim for about grade eight. And it also gives you nice other tips too when you go into the Hemingway app. So that's nice. Um, another general tip is just to shorten it because people have um, short reading attention spans, right? And I'm gonna mention that a lot throughout the presentation as well. 
and then eliminate jargon. That just kind of plays into your keywords and readability. It's the same idea as I was mentioning before about you want people to understand they shouldn't have to put too much effort into figuring out what your business does. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the layout for a website first. And this is specifically for a low involvement website that you can build on a basic builder like Wix or something like that. And when I say low involvement, I just mean like your everyday purchases, things like a hairbrush or soap, um, everyday products like that, as opposed to, you know, a vehicle or a house, those would be high involvement. Um, and this is not cut and dry. You can move things around or add and subtract sections as you like, but this is just a basic one to go from. So we're going to start off with our above the fold section here. That includes your tabs, a benefit statement, a differentiation statement, and a call to action. Then I'll talk a little bit about what should be in your about section, as well as how to structure your benefits section. Then I'll mention a little bit about the products and services area, some tips for writing or sourcing your testimonials, and then just a quick note about what should be in your contact and footer there. Okay, so rating your benefit and differentiation statements. This is the part that you're gonna to wanna to spend the most time on. It's the first thing people see. It has to grab their attention. It has to leave them with a positive you know, feeling, but most importantly, you have to pique their curiosity just a little bit to get them to keep scrolling. So an example of the benefit statement is this one here, a liquor store with a distillery feel. Um, and that just means like that's the main benefit that the customers get from walking into that store. From being a customer of that store, they get an experience. It's you know really nice decor in there. It's low lighting. There's a growler bar. The staff are super knowledgeable. It's it's an experience that's quite a lot different than your average liquor store, right? So that's why it's phrased a liquor store with a distillery feel. Um, and then for their differentiation statement. That's what makes them stand out from the competition. So for this one, they've got, so everyone can find their drink of choice. Um, that's talking about the variety that they sell. Like you can go in there and ask for a kitty bitty beer from St. John's and they'll bring it in for you. They already have some on the shelf actually. So it's just a lot of variety, which is cool. Um, you can also use your unique value proposition as the main header here instead of the benefit statement. Uh, if you have one of those already and it makes sense, it's not too wordy, it's easy enough for people to understand, that can also be useful here. Um, you can also throw in a hook to that as well if you're using it. So like a bold claim or a statistic that you have, something that you can explain further down though. You don't just make a bold claim that you can't back up, but that's where we're talking about piquing the curiosity. Like, what can you tell people to make them want to read more? But yeah, about the benefit and differentiation statements, it's important to spend a lot of time thinking about these things. You know, have a brainstorming session with your team, come up with a whole list of benefits and really nail down what the main one is. And, you know, come up with what makes you different from the competition and nail down your your main differentiation point. And that's, I'm sure a lot of you have done that already, but if not, here's your cue. Okay, so moving on to the about section, I like to keep these nice and short. It's tempting to write your whole company story in there, uh, but you don't need to, and you probably shouldn't, just because, again, of that short attention span that people have. Two paragraphs, tops, and then if you do have a whole story that you want to portray, just put it on your about page and have a read more button to take people there. Because that is important to you. It just doesn't, the full thing doesn't need to be on your homepage. So the things that you do want to include is who are you? So are you, for example, a fresh new business or are you taking on a local business that's been in the community for a while? You can throw that in there. Where are you? This is important. It sometimes gets forgotten, but people do need to know what city you're in. Uh, again, it sounds obvious, but sometimes gets forgotten. But it also helps with your search engine optimization. If you're throwing in your city, then that helps you rank better for sure. 
what's your specialty? This is actually where you can elaborate on your differentiation statement a bit because it's tempting to throw in all of your points of differentiation at the start there, but you don't necessarily need to. You can elaborate and explain that a little bit more here. And then again, keep it short. Like I said, I'm gonna come back to that a lot. Okay, and then for the benefits section, I like to make these more of a graphic section. I know it's very tempting to have a paragraph that explains all of the benefits that people get from being your customer or client, but it just works a lot better when you use icons or photos and then headers paired with those icons as opposed to paragraphs or sentences. So for example, this one here, there's the icon and the benefit is knowledgeable staff. There's wide product selection, Alberta partnerships, Again, keeps their attention, helps guide the reader, and it just gives their brain a break so they don't have to do too much reading. And if your benefit does need a bit of explanation, just throw a sentence below it. It's not going to hurt, but just don't make it a paragraph, that's all. And then it's important to distinguish between benefits and features as well. Uh, this is for your benefits, not your features. You can throw in features in a section below it. Depending on what the product is, sometimes you're definitely going to need that but other times you just simply don't need it. So if you do, I generally would recommend having them maybe smaller text, but with a similar format. So, you know, a checklist perhaps, or icons as well, if that makes sense. All depends. And then getting into the products and services section, I like to follow a similar structure here as the benefits features section. Again, it makes a lot of sense because you usually have photos of your products. If it's a service, you'll be using icons um, and then just a short header for what it is. And if you have to put a description there, if it's not obvious, just keep the description short because it is on your homepage, right? Um, and then I like to highlight just the featured products. It is very tempting to put all of your products onto the homepage, but you just don't need to. Um, you can swap the featured products out every month or so, if you like, but overloading people with information isn't going to help you. So just pick a few selected ones, I'd say three to five. And if you really want to put more on there, just have them in like a slider section so you can click an arrow to see more that way. And then I also like to recommend using title caps, which just means if you have a three letter word for the title of your product, the first letter of your first word will be a capital letter as well as the first letter of the second word and the third word, as opposed to leaving those second capital letters out. Um, just helps your, your page look professional. That's all, it's just something that I've noticed tends to get forgotten occasionally. And as for the testimonial section, there's two ways that you can go about doing this. You can auto populate them from Google or you can select relevant ones on your own and just copy and paste them in. Uh, times when you wanna auto populate them is when you have a good track record of positive reviews. If you have negative ones going on there that you maybe want to sort through first, then I maybe wouldn't auto populate them. Um, so if you're still just selecting relevant ones, then the following tips down here will apply. So I would look for reviews that just communicate one message per review. So for example, you can have one really beautiful review and it goes through lots of different points like, oh, the service at this restaurant was great. The food was amazing. The cocktails were also really good and booking our table was super easy too. That's communicating a whole bunch of different messages. Whereas we like to recommend just choosing one. So one review that says the service was excellent. And then the next review maybe talks about the cocktails and then so on, right? It again, just helps the reader keep their attention. It's more clear, it just helps. Uh, but you can edit these reviews for readability. So for example, if they forgot a, a period, you can add that in, you can slightly edit for grammar uh, just so that it actually makes sense because that does happen sometimes too. And you can shorten the reviews too. As long as you have it in quotes and you, you know, say you want the top sentence and the bottom sentence, but you don't need the body in the middle, 
you can just replace that with, you know, dot, dot, dot. And the note about using real images when possible, that is more related to if you're in the service industry and you really know these people that gave you the reviews, you know them quite well, and you can either request a photo or you just, they can, yeah, they can send one over fairly easily and they're, it's not an uncomfortable thing to do. But also when you're auto-populating reviews from Google, that sometimes is nice because when people upload their own image, sometimes they'll upload a real photo as opposed to like an uh, avatar or just the letters of their name. So that's an option as well. And I just want to point out here about the contact and footer sections. I don't need to spend too much time on them because there's not a whole lot you need to worry about for them. The main thing is just make it easy for people to contact you. Uh, my biggest pet peeve is when you're looking at a website and you're trying to find out the email and you can't find their email anywhere. Just make it easy for people. You can have a message box, but have some information above it with your phone number and your email, maybe your address as well, if that makes sense. But essentially, remember at the start when we talked about the benefit and the differentiation statement, there was a call to action below that, and that would be a button that either says, contact us, get in touch, book now, anything like that. Usually that's gonna go down to your contact section. So it needs to be clear and not hold them back in any way. And then for the footer, um, you should be including your address, email and phone number. And I like to put in a map as well, just to give people an idea of where in the city or town that you are. Sometimes I like to put that next to the contact uh, message box as well. It's just a visually nice thing to do. Okay, so I'm just going to review these general tips here. Again, positive framing, that mostly actually relates to the benefit statements. Now that we know a bit of what they are, it can be tempting to try to call out your competitors, but you don't need to just keep things positive. And then incorporating keywords, uh, you can do this in your headers quite often, and that's gonna help your search engine optimization quite a bit. So in particular keywords like the city that you're in, if you want to rank for your city and put some of those keywords into your headers and you know the main keywords that you want to rank for, incorporate them into your headers if it makes sense, as well as in the body paragraphs and things like that. Again, just check your grammar. It never hurts to do a once over or have a friend do it or just run it through a tool. It definitely helps the professional side of things. And check readability. I do recommend this because a lot of a lot of the times in the companies that we work with, we're dealing with, you know, a paragraph and the paragraph is kind of hard to get through. And what I do is I take the paragraph and break it up into chunks. So I pull out the benefits, I'll pull out features and put them below if that makes sense. I'll pull out the main benefit, things like that. Um, so yeah, check for readability just to make sure you're using short sentences, things grammatically make sense and you're not using too much jargon that's industry, industry specific. And as always, shorten it. I know it hurts, uh, definitely hurts me when you write a masterpiece and then you have to go in and take out half of it it does happen, but at the end of the day, you do need to, you know, make that purchase, make that sale, which means you need to keep their attention. You can't bore them, so just shorten it, make it easier for them.